welcome to the exclusive and luxurious Villa Mia located at Riceland Trace in the village of Canby. It's our location for today's episode of Let's Talk Tobago and you are invited to tour this beautiful property with us. As usual, it's been an eventful week and in the next half hour, we will also recap the major events on the island over the past week. So stay with us for all the details. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. The PTSC is getting up close and personal with Tobago's heritage through its Know Your Country tours. The Tobago Regional Health Authority hosts its first cancer health fair. Kasari youth are learning new skills and unearthing their entrepreneurial potential. And later, many more Tobago homeowners are happy after getting much needed home improvement support. We have all these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. So stay with us. Greetings, this is Marcy Griffiths and you're watching Let's Talk Tobago. Leave it right where you got it. This is Villa Mia where every little detail counts. It's nestled in the hills of Riceland and promises a unique vacation rental experience that you'll only find in Tobago. And you know, speaking of experiences, Tobago is offering visitors a chance to go beyond ordinary. Through the Tobago Tourism Agency, the island is unrolling several initiatives to enhance the overall visitor experience. The details are in our first story. Here's more. Visitors to Tobago will have an enhanced experience. Following a training development workshop that benefited 60 Tobagonians from various groups. The workshop was hosted by the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, the Tobago Tourism Agency, the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, and Virgin Atlantic. This is just one of the many initiatives taken on by the agency to enhance Destination Tobago. It was quite well received. Um, we had a lot of positive comments coming from the participants. We had 45 people, sorry, 55 people from Tobago who participated in that event and it was quite um, encouraging. This is, this is really an introduction to what we see as the next step. And the next steps, we tend to pivot around the beginning of November, where we attend World Travel Market. Tobago is home to over 230 species of exotic birds. 25 of them can only be found on the island. So the Tobago Tourism Agency, along with stakeholders, attended the largest birdwatching fair in the United Kingdom, the British Bird Fair. The goal is to continue to grow arrivals in this niche area. It aligns with the product that's available in Tobago. Um, from time to time, or as we have been measuring for the past um, few months, we've seen the number of people traveling to Tobago to experience and participate in bird watching increase. So that has been one of our core attractors and we have aligned ourselves with that market. A familiarization trip was also hosted for German travel media. But that's not all. Boomerang Rising tour operators was also accommodated to experience the destination firsthand. For the next year, Mr. Lewis says more emphasis will be placed on product enhancing activities. You will be seeing training to, to people who engage in visitors and even secondary um, persons who interact with, 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 um, with our visitors as well. We also will be focusing on enhancing the product. And when I say enhancing the product, I'm talking about the brand has some of those iconic features that speak to our natural environment. The natural environment is one of our core attractors. So you'll be seeing what we call the green initiative that looks at having certification for a number of our properties. As far as our beaches are concerned, blue flag certification will be implemented. Blue Flag is one of the world's most recognized voluntary eco-labels awarded to beaches, marinas, and sustainable boating tourism operators. Up until the end of September 2019, there was an 11% growth in arrivals to Tobago. This private, gated estate sits on an acre of land. It offers breathtaking views of both the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, as you can probably see in the background. Now, if you really want a closer look at the island, your best bet might be a Know Your Country tour. The Public Transport Service Corporation recently launched its historical Fort Tour service. In this next story, Umrara Mills tells us why this tour is so special. Have a look. How well do you know Trinidad and Tobago? 
Here's a chance to find out through the Public Transport Service Corporation, PTSC's Know Your Country Tours. In Tobago, you can take the historical Fort Tour. Residents and holidayers can visit the island's forts, built centuries ago during European occupation. Book the tour and you'll travel to Fort James, Fort Milford, Fort Bennett, and Fort King George in comfort via one of the PTSC's buses. You'll learn about these historical sites from a certified tour guide. For many, it's already a memorable experience. It was a fun experience for me and the students. It was very informative. It was very fun visiting all forts. I would encourage the children to come on this tour because they will learn a lot about Tobago. My experience is that it was very educational. I get to learn a little history of the forts in Tobago. The Know Your Country Tours accommodates 25 patrons and up. Tours are scheduled twice per week. Director of PTSC Tobago, Larry Paul, is encouraging locals to take advantage of this low-cost sightseeing excursion. I think all of us should be ambassadors in the own right. You have to know about your island if you can sell it. So we are saying, come discover Tobago, rediscover the island, know the gem that we have that is called Tobago. And we want to start in the schools and also all locals to take advantage of this. Know your island, tell persons about Tobago so we can get visitors to come to your island. The Secretary of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, Nadine Stewart-Phillips, is praising the initiative. She believes the tours will enhance the tourism services and experiences already available for local and international visitors. This project has the potential to generate an increased appreciation for Tobago's natural wonders and historic treasures. This further complements ongoing public education programs spearheaded by the division, such as our Community Tourism Awareness Program that facilitates the transference of sound tourism-based education, knowledge, and skills in communities throughout the island. The tours can boost the tourism sector, providing revenue for hotels, restaurants, and other service providers. It can also stimulate the small business sector in various communities. If you wish to book a tour to explore Tobago, you can call 635-1470 or 623-2341, extension 9622. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Villa Mia is owned by Mrs. Carrie Ann Mueller. Its name was inspired by the owner's daughter, Mia Grace. The unique and charming design of the property is a reflection of Mia's personality. Now we all want a crime-free society and understanding how and when crimes occur can aid in the fight against criminal activity. The country is getting some support in this area from the European Union through a security and development campaign. Here's this story. You can turn things around even after making bad choices. That's the message of the Life After Today Roadshow. The Roadshow is part of a security development campaign hosted by the European Union. Young people can find empowerment and knowledge through this campaign, which uses music, performing arts and social activities to drive home a positive message. This project, Life After the Day, a year-long campaign, is one of many supported by the delegation of the European Union as we continue to identify and implement initiatives that can offer opportunities for turnaround and to provide us with positive alternatives by introducing strategies that may change some of the negative mindsets, perceptions and actions of young people. The Life After Today campaign targets major social institutions such as primary and secondary schools, NGOs and community groups. In Tobago, the campaign teamed up with the Roxborough Police Youth Club for their first roadshow. In a place where from time to time we are plagued with lots of social ills that are addressing society. And the burning question for you as young people, as you participate in this program, where we are going to utilize our very own young messengers, young ambassadors, young cultural ambassadors of Tobago. 
The road show featured three primary schools. They performed speech band monologues filled with positive messages. is entitled Life, Ta Life After Today and it's the first time we have it on the island of Tobago and it's a good thing because it sends a positive message to the people, young people of Tobago East that violence is not the answer. There's life after today and without violence they can have a positive future. The road show was hosted at the Collis Hazel Youth Enhancement Center in Roxborough. I'm Kern De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. The island's first cancer health fair is spreading public awareness about the disease and information on how you can reduce your risks. We have more on this story right after this break. Yo, 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 Tobago, what's up? This is yours truly positive from beautiful Tobago and you're locked on to Let's Talk Tobago. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome back. You are watching Let's Talk Tobago and we are at Villa Mia. The villa can comfortably accommodate 15 guests. It's got five spacious and private bedrooms, some with ensuite bathrooms included. Now this, Tobago is stepping up its efforts to spread public awareness about the threat of cancer. So the oncology unit hosted a free public health fair where attendees heard from healthcare professionals and the first-hand stories of cancer survivors. Here's more. We are here at the first cancer health fair. It's being hosted by the oncology unit of the Tobago Regional Health Authority, the TREG. And we have with us Ms. Samantha Corbin Nances, who is a registered oncology nurse. She's one of the coordinators. Mrs. Nances, could you give us the theme of this event that you all are having and why it's taking place? So the theme of this health fair is Dimensions of Wellness. She. She was an acronym, S-H-E, to support, help, and empower. Why we are having this health fair, it is the first ever health fair, is that we have realized that Tobagonians, and by extension the whole committee, needs to be aware of cancer. Cancer is on the rise in Tobago, and we see the need to have people be aware of healthy practices that they can adopt to leave out the destructive practices that may contribute to cancer. According to Nurse Nancy's, cancers of the breast, prostate and colon are the most prevalent forms treated at the oncology department. One cancer survivor is Onika Thompson Tony. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. She underwent a mastectomy and is now in remission. She shared her story. Somehow I felt I was less than a woman, but I realized I am not, and I've also realized cancer is no respect of person, age, religion, color. It's out there. It affects everyone. The journey right now, it's getting easier. I attend the oncology clinic. I have nice support from the nurses there. The health fair, which took place at the Gulf City Mall Lowlands, also focused on men's well-being. Prostate cancer survivor Michael Stewart shared the male perspective. Yes, you can have an erection if you do the nerve-sparing radical prostatectomy. If you take the entire prostate out, the nerve passes through the prostate, and so therefore that is going to um, prevent you from having an erection. But once you do the nerve sparing, yes, you can have sex and you can continue. What am I saying? Men, there is hope. Don't neglect your health. Facilitators provided information on how patients and caregivers can deal with a cancer diagnosis. Topics ranged from emotional support and spirituality to diet and financial management. Patrons underwent basic health screenings and interacted with medical beauty and mental health service providers. 
when you have a program where you can have hands-on, the speakers giving you information, professionals giving you information, so that you can then ask questions, you can find out stuff. Because knowledge is responsibility. And a lot of times things happen to us simply because we don't know. So it's definitely excellent. The TRH's oncology department is based at the old Scarborough Hospital at Fort King George. If you want more information about cancers and treatment options, you can call 660-4744, extensions 3450 to 3452. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Guests can enjoy Villa Mia's excellent amenities. It's modern kitchen space if you'd like to bring your special culinary creations to life and a spacious living area to spend time with family and friends. Now let's hop from Canby to the village of Castara for a minute where the future is bulging with opportunity. In fact, Castara youth are taking part in a creative design program that's seeking to make good on the community's entrepreneurship potential. We have more in this story. Castara youth were challenged to get creative at the Creative Design Program hosted by the Castara Youth Development Center. That's exactly what 12 young residents from the North Tobago Village did. They impressed Youth Development Coordinator Jamoy Henry during the session, creating beautiful clutch purses, fabric earrings, and necklaces. It's one of the initiatives aimed at inspiring the next generation of entrepreneurs from the community. Creative design is a broad topic, so we narrowed it down to clutch purses and necklaces because Castor is a tourism community and persons usually sell clutch purses and for the vendors still you have to outsource the clutch purses so then if the young persons in the community take, take up the skill and learn it and be able to create their own business, they will now be able to sell these persons the clutch purses and the earrings and the necklaces so then the person wouldn't have to now outsource it out of the community. Participant Shaniqua Jack says through the program she's learned valuable skills. She's also acquired essential life skills and is already envisioning a career. Thus far, the program is going well. We started off well. When I came, we was learning makeup. We moved on to clutch purses and I want to start like a makeup business that I can teach people what I learn and become better as I go along. Tutor Nikaisha Legaton says she's happy to support the program. She believes ventures like these can help youth provide for themselves by becoming entrepreneurs. It's important for young people to learn skills like these so that they will not just be typically dependent on gaining an education, finding a government job. It's also good to have another source of income and it's also broadening your horizons in terms of learning different competent skills and survival in the world. The next installment will focus on commercial tinting and will target the young men of Castara. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. There's lots to keep you occupied at Villa Mia. Why not soak up the sun near the pool or play some foosball? There's also a piano if you've got musical fingers. Now, sometimes leaving your comfort zone can be of great benefit, but for one school, opportunity is coming to them as a group of Tobagonians are giving back to positively influence the next generation. Find out how in our next story. As you grow older, you will discover that you have two hands, one for helping yourself and the other for helping others, end quote. That's the approach that Tobago Institute of Education, TIE, is taking. TIE is a body of former Tobago students from the early 70s, formed in 2017. They are seeking to make a difference on the island, so they have adopted Lansomi Methodist Primary School. You will become our little brothers and sisters. So we will talk with the principal on a monthly, weekly basis to find out how you're going. We do have some stationaries to give out later on to you, and we are going to be monitoring you from time to time. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles is challenging TIE. He says the adoption process is not only about providing supplies. There are other areas where children would need the group support. One element of the adoption of this school has to do with sponsorships. The idea of helping you in your reading and your mathematics mainly. Another of the Ideas in respect of 
what we're talking about, adoption, has to do with what you call mentoring and tutoring, both individually and in groups. Mr. Charles is happy to report that TIE is a non-profit organization. It is very significant, as I was about to say, that a group that is not a money-making group is taking the step to do something like this, especially in an area like this. This is the first school that TIE has adopted, and there are plans to take its work further in the future. I am Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up next, several Tobago homeowners are benefiting from much-needed home improvement support. We'll tell you how when Let's Talk Tobago returns right after this break. Stay with us. Hi, this is Kivo, and tune in to Let's Talk Tobago. Villamia is serenity and tranquility, and it's surrounded by the beauty of nature. It's 10 minutes away from major beaches such as Pigeon Point and Storbay, golf courses, and five minutes from shopping areas, the movie theater, and other amenities. Finally, we take a look at some happy homeowners who've been wanting some much-needed home renovation support. They'll wait no more as they have recently received the funds at a check distribution ceremony. Here are the details. There were smiles all around the room as homeowners received check after check after check. A total of 20 grand checks was distributed recently. Assemblyman Clarence Jacob, Secretary of the Division of Settlements, Urban Renewal and Public Utilities, was happy to celebrate with the recipients as he disbursed grants for the final quarter of 2018-2019. Just this quarter, I was able to push for 371 persons. I think that is kind of historic now. Um, I am very passionate about the grants program because of the area that we live we some of us live on the shoreline and you know that sea coast sea blast would affect us in different ways our roofs and also general persons want to improve their standard of living by you know adding on a little part to your house fixing your ceiling your driveway your downstairs so i'm really happy today that we are able to give out all these checks. As an advocate for his division's social programs, Assemblyman Jacob believes it is his duty to seek the interest of residents and help to elevate their standard of living while increasing the housing stock on the island. The secretary also outlined plans that are in the pipeline. In the future, we have intentions of building some homes. We are in the process of developing Adelphi area and also the Riseland area. We want to build 150 homes in Adelphi, that's Mason Hall, and 50 homes in Riseland. So I would encourage you all to partake, apply. Some of you all are living maybe by mommy still, and you know you want to put on a little downstairs. It is a, there's an opportunity for you to get your own home, because there's no place like home. Some individuals were first-time recipients. This is actually the first one, so um, it's ready to finish off some renovations. This is the first. I heard about it through a friend. Um, no, it, it wasn't a long process. While others had already received a first tranche. This is my second check from the program. Um, so I am ecstatic to at least finish it downstairs of my home. I learned about the program from an employee here who is my friend and um, she encouraged me to sign up and get the stuff going because she knew I had a piece of the land home to work on. And I would encourage persons to access the grant because um, it helps you go a long way and um, so you don't have to have the stress of trying to finance it on your own. Funds dispersed at the presentation ceremony were as follows. Home Improvement Grant, $90,000. Home Improvement Subsidy, $20,000. Home Completion Program, $40,000. And Beneficiary Owned Land, $150,000. For a total of $300,000. And for the financial year 2018-2019, the total value of grants disbursed by the Division to Households in Tobago is Home Improvement Grant $3,832,500. Home Improvement Subsidy $390,000. Home Completion Program $1,080,000. And Beneficiary Owned Land $5,741,000 for a grand total of 
$500. Check amounts ranged from $7,000 to $25,000 and homeowners were advised to use the funds wisely and for the intended purpose. I'm Antoinette Mora for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. We'll now have a look at who had their say this week. It was A. You spelling things. That's a quick question, nothing. That's not, hold on. I've written for you money for the question it's that time again. It's have your say time again. And the question we're asking today is, would it be secession or autonomy? Secession is a total separation from any government or federation. Autonomy means that we just handle our affairs more. This is what you said. We're saying autonomy because a decision now. Decision can make from Trinidad for something so go on in Tobago. You understand? We need to make some and we own decision. We need to sit down and decide some of our own affairs and things. Give me autonomy any day over secession. Autonomy will work better. To try to separate, I think Tobago is too small and the population, that is, that is the main problem there. We do have the people to support. To be going and have Stockholm Syndrome, to me, in my opinion. So it's like they are already in love with the system that they live under. I am not for any secession at all. I'm for autonomy. Reason being that we are stronger together. Nations around the world, they are trying to come together. And at this juncture, we shouldn't be trying to separate. It's just weakness. I prefer autonomy right now. It's because... We cannot really do anything much to help ourselves. Tobago need to improve on their own because they have a lot of things that Tobago need to get where we cannot afford to get from Trinidad. We were taught uh, or trained to believe that Tobago cannot stand on its own. And that is a thing that has depressed me a lot. We don't want secession and autonomy. We are in no position now to run our own affairs. We could handle our own affairs. Autonomy. We have a better fighting chance as a twin island state. But at the same time, we could have the decision of making our own rules and governing our own laws. Some of the things we need to do in Tobago, we have to go down to Trinidad, come back up, and I find it as waste time. I think we could do more on our own over here. You will take it so long, men like you and the youth, is them are to come in a different thing for you to control your affairs. It was A. You spelling things. That's a quick question. Nothing. That's not hold on. I've written for you money for this. We've come to the end of yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago, and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now for more information on Villa Mia, you can call 364-6028 or you can email them at villamiatobago at gmail.com. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We leave you with a montage of the Dia Lighting Ceremony at the Mount St. George Police Youth Club. We do hope you enjoy.